How's it going everybody? It's Michael Labrador here and this is Ken. Together we are the Labradorks. Welcome to our channel where we talk about everything adulting and all things that boggle the millennial young couple. So today's topic is going to be about the difference of dating in your 20s versus in your 30s. We wanted to create this video because it is a pretty interesting topic to talk about, especially when you're in your 30s. And when you think back to when we were 20s, it is very different about your Okay, so when you're younger, you have this ideal situation of where your life is supposed to be at when you're in your mid-20s or early 30s. Fast forward to when you're 30 years old, it's not how everyone sometimes imagine how it should be. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the topic was because not everybody's journey is the same. And I think it's because of our parents and how the previous generation did it. I think mm. that's a big reason. But it's also very interesting because you kind of get to see and kind of grow from all the different relationships mm. that you've entered when you were in your 20s yeah. versus when you're in your 30s. Yeah, so what we're going to do today is talk about the three kind of high level points. Now, disclaimer, this is in no way a video that is meant to give any advice or dating advice or relationship advice. We're not relationship professionals. We're not yeah. counselors. But what we are here to do is explain and give you our experience of when we were dating, I would say mid to late 20s, to what we've learned more recently now. Yeah, the first main difference of dating in your 20s versus your 30s this is the most obvious one is the physical attraction what you like in guys in your 20s aren't necessarily what you look for in your 30s so, so what is your experience when you look at the physicalities of people that you dated when you were 20 and me <laughs> I feel like when you're in your 20s, you're a lot more shallow. You care about all of the physical attributes that everyone else would care about, whether it be your friends, whether it's social media, what your ideal man is supposed to look like. The physical aspect of things, Ken's right, you do look at different things when you're 20 versus when you're older. Um, one reason is, I think because you are younger, your hormones are a little different. I'm not saying this is as a general statement. For the most part, people, you know, guys, that in their 20s don't think with their brains right that you know younger people prioritize the physical aspect of things mm -hmm. versus other things and it's not only that because people are still trying to create their social cultures they're still trying to get in with a group to try to get in with a good group of dudes or people felt like you needed to bring a trophy to be accepted into that group and one of your trophies is a really hot girlfriend okay so we're also not saying there's nothing wrong with no, nothing. appreciating physical attributes of a human being yeah. all we're saying is that percentage wise like i used to care about this when i was younger a lot more than you do and now <laughs> i think that's the main difference is i think when we're 20 versus when we're 30 with physical aspect of things we are more concerned about what our friends or other people will think about us based on who we're dating people are now more concerned about well can they provide can you live with them can they bear you a child do they want to have a child? those are the things that are being uh, discussed now it is still important because yes. you still need to be attracted <laughs> Did to whoever you're with. <laughs> yeah, so that's you're why. You're my best view. <laughs> you're my best view. No! <laughs> <laughs> So that's why it has to be on the list. You have to be physically attracted to someone to even start learning about them. If you're not physically attracted to them, you may not have as interesting of a conversation with them. So it starts there. I, and that's my opinion. It, so it's good that this is actually the first point yeah. because it does start there. I dated a guy who like physically wise, he was all there. But the moment this guy opened his mouth, it was just a big turnoff. Little things like that where yes, it plays a role. It gets your initial attention. That's only going to go on for so long. For those that may or may not know, I used to be in the nightlife scene. That was where all the people of the opposite sex were. And it's where people wore pretty much nothing. In my early 20s, that's what I was attracted to. Like, when one of your other promoter friends saw you with someone like that, you are more respected. But that's what I initially thought. When you get older, it just doesn't turn out how you feel think about it in your head I think a false reality attraction is a lot of different things we're just talking about physical mm. attraction right now good point so the 
after the physical attraction, it actually comes to the next difference that we want to talk about, which is the character and personality. To who are they as a person? Mm-hmm. So when I was 20, never really thought about their personality. I just didn't really think about when they opened their mouth, did they sound dumb? Do they have knowledge? Do they have, you know, family qualities? Do they have caring qualities? Do they give me gifts? I didn't think about any of that stuff when I was 20 because mm-hmm. I never thought with my brain. What did you think? <laughs> I just never thought with my brain. So now that we are in our 30s, what we've learned on the way is, I think, are become more important because it's the things that your mm-hmm. family looks at. When you are a little older, more mature, it's the things that actually matter because you wouldn't want to be with someone when you're 40 and realizing that they clash. You guys are just totally opposite personalities that don't even work. Mm-hmm. I feel like in your 20s, people are still trying to figure themselves out mm-hmm. and people are still developing that personality and that character, whether it be good, the bad, or even the ugly. When I was in my 20s, like I said, I didn't know what I wanted. I was really into like, <clears throat> oh, bad boys and like you had like that badass demeanor. But <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm imagining. Have you guys ever seen um, Vin Diesel? Oh my god, I wasn't even saying that. Vin Diesel. What? Fast or, and Furious? Or like. I had the biggest crush on Vin Diesel. Okay, that's why she said Vin Diesel. <laughs> That's why you like that movie. No, it's a really good movie about cars. You're such a liar. <laughs> but when I was in my 20s, I didn't really yeah. care about that. Like, I didn't care if you were... So why is that? Like, why did we not think about like that? Like I said, I feel like you were too blinded by physical attributes. Blinded by other parts of the body. <laughs> yeah, so like you don't see people in full bloom in their 20s. They're still... Full bloom. Yeah, you, like they're still trying... <laughs> People are still developing themselves in their 20s. And even until now, we're still developing ourselves now that we're in our 30s. But it's a lot more apparent when you're in your 20s. So I feel like when two people are dating in their 20s, you guys grow together as an individual and learn to love the person that you're growing with. Or you realize that it's not for you. Mm, Yeah. Or some people realize that it's not for them. Some people don't. And then they end up in their 30s with someone that they didn't like in the first place. Well, for example you and I we started dating in our late 20s and we've both had previous relationships before we became serious we kind of knew what we wanted yeah. the qualities that we were looking for because of what you've experienced and I agree wow, so this is getting so deep see I used to like books. Vin Diesel now I look at him and I don't like him <laughs> because she saw me <laughs> She saw Michael. I still love the movie Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Oh man, I'm totally gonna get made fun of. <laughs> so uh, after learning about character, the other difference that we notice, and, and we'll explain a little bit about why we notice these things, is the aspiration. And I don't know if you can find this with a second point, mm-hmm. but again, we wanted to kind of put this on its own point, mainly because it is an important part that people think about individually, but it's the aspirations that the other person has. So mm-hmm. when I was... 20 because you're still young you're still living in the moment you're yoloing whatever it is that you're doing you don't really realize that the aspiration aspect of another person is important is something or I, I guess you know it's important but you don't know how important it is mm-hmm. it's not at the top of your list and we're not saying everyone's like that because yes. I know some girls we're just basing it on our experience yeah I know some girls who only look at that and I know guys that only look at that too right so aspiration is a big part and when we were 20 i looked at it but if it wasn't physically there i would not even consider (laughs) the next thing so i think it's because we're still young and we're living in the moment is the reason why we think that way now Mm -hmm. when we're 30 it's different because you have responsibilities now you know you don't want to lose your job because you need money to work to live in your house you need money to drive your car to be social and to pay for your insurance to pay for your whatever it is you never had all of those list of bills when you were 20. When you're 20, your bill is your phone bill, right? If you are if you were living on your own, you got that. And always actually commend that to, for, for people that live on their own when they're younger because it teaches you all these things, you know, you will learn later on in life. In my 30s now, it's a big part. I'm always, you know, me and Ken are always having conversations about maybe we should take this kind of course. Should we consider this just to learn it, right? Just as something, is it something that we want to grow? You know, we have this YouTube channel that we're learning and growing. There's, there's all these different skills and it's all these things that you have to that we think about now because we have to think about when we're 40 when yeah. we're 50 when we're 60 you know we're not saying that 
all 20 year olds don't have yeah. aspiration because there's I, I know a lot of 20 year olds that are driven I feel like when you're in your 30s you're either already established yeah what you've wanted to do so when you're in your 30s it's hard to backtrack and look for someone still trying to figure themselves out you're already on to the next phase you already know where you are then you already know what you're also looking for but I think overall what what do we want to drive home is you know though there are differences you have to kind of live through it I think yes. that's the biggest thing that we want to kind of leave off with mm -hmm. is and, and you, to leave you guys with some nuggets is you have to experience it you have to actually go through and yeah it sucks when you're in your 20s you're realizing all these things and it's like go through these breakups and you're like crap now I realize that physical is not the number one thing, right? And it sucks, right? You you yeah. have this really attractive, significant other that just breaks your heart. That has to happen in order for you to realize, okay, maybe physicality is not my number one thing. I think that's that's one thing. You have to live through it. And, I, and it's not about getting to the end and to the finish line fast, but it's about improving yourself. And that's one of the nuggets that I want to mention is, you know, you have to continue working on yourself. You have to take every single experience that you had when you were 20 and think of about okay well how did I get out of that crappy situation and get past it right if you're in this current situation now right where you feel like you are 30 but you feel like you're kind of 20 and you're kind of in that same position you know these are things that through all these experiences um, helped is working on yourself so work on your career do something that you are passionate about first that will grow and you will get past whatever things you yeah. realize when you were 20. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like it's not a race. I know people compare themselves a lot to what other people have. If you're happy with yourself, that that's all that means. matters, that was, right? Yeah. yeah, and also which bridges off to, you know, you have to ignore the pressures. At one point in my life, every time I went through Facebook, someone was either popping another kid or, or, getting, married. or getting married and yeah you get all these external pressures whether it's from your parents whether it's from social media you have to just do what's right for you and yeah. you don't you don't want to rush it right getting married at 25 yeah. versus getting married at 30 you're still getting married yeah and, and this is not to say you can't have aspirations and try to meet them early i think that's wicked that you, if you can do that but i'm speaking to mainly people who get put in the position you and you feel like your back is against the wall to ken's point don't let the external pressures affect you you got to do what's right for you mm. don't let someone tell you what's right for you you know what we've learned through dating in our 20s versus dirting dirting <laughs> dirty <laughs> so when when you are comparing big differences that we listened a lot to what other people were telling us mm -hmm. versus what we were telling ourselves you got to do what's right for you there's no one else out there that will tell you what to do or what's best for you than yourself but that's kind of what we've experienced and learned dating over five years and what we've learned dating later in our lives after we've done all the 20s dating there are big differences obviously but there's also a lot of lessons that you learn if you are in your late 20s or in your early 30s and you have some of these thoughts that we've talked about today don't worry it's normal it's not the end of the world you're not alone people think about these things I always tell myself if I were to strip away everything that I've owned and it was just me am I okay with who I am and where I'm at in my life mm. That's fucking deep, Bars. right? Some, that, some people rapper, you need, and if you can honestly tell yourself that you're happy with what you have, mm -hmm. already that's a big win. Yeah. Everything else can can yeah. come. I think um, I, I'm all about learning and, and experience and just doing shit. Most people are kinesthetic, but it's learning by doing and experiencing. I'm right? like that too. I, I like to I, experience I am, everything. I'm like that. That's if someone why we're meant to be. I, uh, through all this you gotta you gotta take every single scenario and learn from it and grow from it and how do you improve yourself mm -hmm. you gotta look at that growth you gotta look at that 10 year gap like I, I don't think I regret or would ever take back all the stuff that happened to me when I was 20 it's what shaped me now same right so why are you copying me uh, yeah, so that's it from us. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what you guys think about dating in your 20s versus dating in your 30s. Oh, stay tuned for our next video, which is how to budget for your wedding I'm using Michael's spreadsheet. He has like this amazing spreadsheet that we used for our wedding. wedding, which may not happen. One of the biggest things that helped us with the spreadsheet is we were able to save our entire wedding budget within a year. Yep. Make sure to stay tuned for our next video. Also stay tuned. We have been seeing a lot of vendor client 
clashing yes. on a lot of social media. So, so much drama <laughs> with these vendors. We want to talk about it. We want to get your feedback. So stay tuned. We are going to be releasing a video about that as well. So stay tuned. One of the things that I wish I had in my 20s was Michael's spreadsheet of how to manage your finances, right? So make sure to check out that video over here. And if you're getting married during this time, you should also check out this video yes. right over here. That's Thanks it from us. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.